In 1944, Germany introduced the feared ME-262 jet fighter, the first mass-produced jet fighter in history, into service. Although the ME-262 immediately became the most advanced fighter in the skies, Germany was already looking to improve it, as its development was hasty, being that it incorporated many new technologies that were rushed into service. Included in this is the fact that the design of the ME-262 originated in the 1930s, making it relatively old compared to the technology that it sported. As such, though it was incredibly fast for its time, it was by no means a sharpened tool, and had areas where it could be vastly improved, including both engine strength and reliability, as well as the overall design of the 262 itself. While a gigantic leap forward, sporting jet engines and swept wings, it was originally intended to have its engines mounted into the fuselage underneath the wing roots. But, due to the Junkers Jumo 004 jet engines being larger than anticipated, and taking longer than hoped to develop, these engines were moved to pods under the wings. This movement of the engine pods necessitated the 18.5 degree wing sweep that became one of the 262's trademark features, as it was needed in order to maintain a better center of gravity, rather than to serve a purpose in terms of high speed flight or maneuverability. Because of its rush development and obvious faults, several design improvements were planned for the ME-262, with three high speed models being designed in total, with one of those models definitively being built, and another version being questionable on if it was built or not. These improvements focusing mainly on the speed and maneuverability of the ME-262, were designated Hochgeschwindigkeit, or HG, and are referred to as the HG-1, HG-2, and HG-3, with each design becoming progressively more advanced compared to each previous iteration. As World War II progressed, with Germany's outlook becoming progressively dimmer, Germany began to rush development of several projects that were still months or years from being perfected. Though the ME-262 itself was a leap forward and was flyable, it was incredibly unreliable for many reasons, including poor engine quality due to a shortage of strategic materials, poor quality of the plane itself as many were built using slave labor and were susceptible to sabotage, along with the engines also being susceptible to sabotage, and general maintenance issues, all helping to lead to only a small percentage of the total 1,443 ME-262s that were built to ever see combat, and only a somewhat small percentage of those that saw combat were operational at any one time. To illustrate the situation in late war Germany, on April 10th, 1945, a total of 60 ME-262s were forced to try to fend off over 1,000 Allied bombers. Regardless of the worsening war situation, and in conjunction with the development of not only other jet planes, but new jet engines as well, Messerschmitt initiated the development of newer, faster versions of the ME-262 that were designed to incorporate newer technology, research, and design knowledge, as much was still being learned about how the ME-262 flew, even after initial production began. An important figure in the HG project, Adolf Boosman, was an early proponent of wing sweep and, though he suggested that the ME-262 be created with a 35 degree wing sweep, not unlike what was used on later F-86 Sabre jets as well as the MiG-15, he was initially rebuffed. Boosman was one of the earliest engineers to study the benefits of radical wing sweep and was a key reason why the HG-2 and HG-3 versions of the ME-262 saw 35 degree wing sweep and 45 degree wing sweep respectively. This was to not only allow the planes to fly faster, as wing sweep sweep helped to increase a plane's critical Mach number, but it also helped to improve high-speed maneuverability. Because of this, and due to the increasing knowledge of how aerodynamics affect high-speed flight, the HG project started in early 1944, with the ME-262 HG-1 being built from the pre-production ME-262A1 Model V9, featuring a low-drag racing cockpit called the Renkabine, leading-edge extensions on the wings, smooth skin as the fuselage on the ME-262 was famously rough, detracting from aerodynamics, and it likely featured a full combat load with its four 30mm MK-108 cannons still being installed. It also featured redesigned engine pods for greater aerodynamics. It also used the Junkers Jumo 004B engines, as these were used on all production ME-262s, which gave it a total thrust between both engines of about 17.66 kN. In all likelihood, had the ME-262 HG-1, if it or any portion of it had made it into production, it would have featured the Junkers Jumo 004D engines, of which produced 10.3 kilonewtons of force per engine, or around 20.6 kilonewtons between both, or the Jumo 004E engine which had an afterburner, with the 004D being ready for production by the time that the war ended, though the E was not far behind. Even with the lesser 004B engine, the HG-1 still managed to reach a top speed of 600 miles per hour in level flight, or around 965 kilometers per hour at 6,000 meters, which set a speed record, although this remained unverified because it was done during wartime conditions. For perspective, 
perspective, the standard ME262A1A featured a top speed and level flight of 560 miles per hour. Although this was indeed optimistic, as build quality varied greatly between each ME262 and the engines that they carried, largely due to rampant usage of slave labor and the sabotage that inherently came from it. Acceleration in the HG1 is also noted to have improved over the standard ME262, likely as a byproduct of the improved aerodynamics. Alternatively, there are reports of later ME262 variants being planned to incorporate the much more powerful Heinkel HES-011 jet engines, of which had 12.7 kilonewtons of force each, which would have likely been seen on the HG2 and HG3 had they reached serial production. Regardless of which engine was to power the ME262 of the future, with the Jumo 004D likely being the interim engine for the ME262 once it reached full production, it was clear that, while it was indeed a positive step forward, the HG1 simply improved the sleekness of the 262 with few other design changes. To make the ME262 more competitive, especially with the war going increasingly poorly for Germany, more radical designs had to be drawn up and constructed as replacement fighters could be built, such as the Messerschmitt P1101. As such fighters could be built from the ground up with the knowledge gained from the increasingly limited ME262. Until such fighters could be built, the HG2 and HG3 were designed to both research features that could be incorporated into future 262 variants and study high-speed flight for totally new aircraft to be developed. The HG2 was to be a much more heavily redesigned 262 than the HG1, featuring fundamental changes to the aircraft rather than simply streamlining the plane. As such, the HG2 featured 35-degree swept wings, which is nearly two times the wing sweep on the standard ME262 and the HG1, as well as the low-drag racing cockpit of the HG1, and a few fuselage that featured a reduced curvature, which would make it so that it would have less area, thus making it more aerodynamic. It would have also had its engines brought closer to the wing brute as well, along with featuring the aerodynamic nacelles featured on the HG-1. Its most radical change, however, would have possibly been its tail, as some proposals had the HG-2 featuring a V-tail, or butterfly tail. A V-tail would have reduced drag, but would have had its controls that weren't as fine as a typical T-tail, and would have not been as structurally stable, as V-tails are known to be structurally weak. Such a tail had already been tested on a BF-109 and it was found that during pitch maneuvers you'd have a slight yawing and during yaw maneuvers you'd have slight pitching which would make it so that landing was difficult and you could not have it point on target very easily. The history of the construction of the HG-2 is slightly more murky than the HG-1, though most sources tend to agree that it had been built from a modified ME-262A1A, though some sources state that it was nearing completion while others had the ME-262HG-2 ready to fly, as it was said to have been ready at an airfield. Field. Nearly all sources agree, however, that it never flew, as it was likely damaged in a runway accident or, even more likely, was damaged beyond repair in a bombing raid in April 1945, weeks or days before the war ended. Some sources have the HG-2 at the Lechfield Airfield at the start of 1945, though this is unclear, although its ultimate fate is largely agreed upon, again being that it was destroyed. Regardless, the HG-2 would have flown with the Jumo 004B during testing, though it would have been likely upgraded to the 004D engine with the enhanced thrust, though some sources state that, had this been ready, the Heinkel HES-011 engines would have been used, had the HG-2 made it to production. The T-tail would have also likely stayed had this variant made it to production. Though no surviving flight test data exists, being that the HG-2 likely never made it to the skies, it was extensively wind tunnel tested, and was estimated to have a top speed of around 658 miles per hour at 6,000 meters, or around 1,058 kilometers per hour, with an estimated rate of climb of around 25 meters per second. The HG-3 was to be the most radical design of them all, featuring 45-degree wing sweep, engines located in the wing route as part of the fuselage itself, wings blended with the fuselage, as well as a totally redesigned sleeker fuselage. The horizontal stabilizers on the T-tail would have also had a 45-degree wing sweep. The HG-3, which likely would have featured more advanced engines, such as the aforementioned HES-011, was projected to have a top speed of 680 miles per hour, or around 1,094 kilometers per hour at 6,000 meters which equals a critical Mach number of 0.96, making this a near supersonic aircraft. Per records, a scale model appears to have been built and wind tunnel tested, though a working prototype was likely never in any stage of construction. Had the war lasted several months longer, granted delays in the Allied advanced and bombing campaigns, such a plane would have likely been built. Even with the HG series, these were just prototypes and were largely meant for high-speed research, and were not likely to have been produced en masse for combat, though improvements would have likely been implemented into later variants of the ME-262, with the HG-1's changes being the most likely to have been adopted quickly in the interim. Either way, with the ME-262 being a somewhat older and increasingly limited design, 
Germany had plans to move on from the Me262 altogether, with new planes such as the P1101 that featured variable sweep wings and the capability to fire the then in testing Rorschach X4 air to air missile, as well as the P1099, among many other designs that were on the drawing board or were being researched and occasionally built. Regardless of the intent, capabilities, and even the feasibility of such modifications on the Me262, the HG series promised to be, and was in part, reality, a step forward for the capabilities of jet aircraft and would have potentially taken the Me262 into Generation 1.5 of jet development, placing the Germans even farther ahead of the Allies in jet technology and research than they already were. Had these variants been produced, namely the HG2 and HG3, the Germans would have taken an already large speed advantage with the standard Me262 and made it gigantic, with the HG2 and HG3 being over 100 miles per hour faster than the standard 262A1A, of which was already about 120 to 150 miles per hour faster than the fastest propeller planes that the Allies fielded by war's end. When combined with the engine improvements that were constantly being made in the Junkers Jumo 004 with current and upcoming variants, along with new types of jet aircraft being ready for testing and production, the HG series of planes would have provided improvements to the Me262 that would have kept it competitive with any of the jet fighters that the Allies were beginning to produce by the end of the war, possibly allowing the Me262 to be better than anything that the Allies could field through possibly the end of 1946, especially if the projected statistics in regards to speed are accurate. In the end, however, the HG series from the built and flown HG1, the completed but destroyed HG2, and the wind tunnel tested HG3 would prove to be little more than a historical footnote. Although the data procured during this program, as well as the scientists that worked on it, undoubtedly aided the victorious allied nations in the post-war era, influencing designs such as the F-86 Sabre and MiG-15, both of which saw combat against each other only years later in the skies over Korea. In this way, the little-known HG series of the Me-262s left an indelible mark on aircraft development, of which aided in the speed of aircraft development for future more advanced designs, which indirectly has led to our modern world being just a little bit faster than it possibly may have been otherwise. That said, thanks so much for watching everyone. Please like, comment, and subscribe, especially if you'd like more content like this. Check out my other history videos, which I have linked below, including one on the P-1101 that was mentioned earlier in this video. But either way, thanks again, and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.